Canterlot High was, on most days, a friendly and happy place to be in. The students got on with each other in a way that few other schools would know, and rare and very rarely, if ever, did any real strife break out between anyone who went there. One only had to look at this place to think of it as the kind of school they would want to be a part of. And yet, despite all the positives, there was one person amidst the mass of student body that did not seem happy or content. Sadly, that person was you. It wasn't that you had a bad life or lacked friends, far from it. However, you had a problem, and it was one that ate away at you every single time you thought about it. Now, like most teenagers, there was one aspect of high school life that took up a good deal of your thinking, and that was romance. Trouble is that it was something that was almost impossible for you to achieve. It wasn't that you didn't get along with the other girls of the school, but rather the fact that you completely froze up when speaking to them. The moment that dating or other romantic notions entered your mind, you became like a statue, incapable of getting out even the most basic of sentences. Plus, there was the issue that your nervousness about the matter kept you from seeking out any help from your friends, so getting advice on the issue wasn't really within your grasp. Still, despite all that, you, nevertheless, tried to go about your day as you always did. And why shouldn't you? You had friends, you had your health, and barring the aforementioned issue with girls, your life was great. And that's what you focused on now, as you walked down the hallway to your locker, ready to get things for the upcoming classes you had. The bell had already rung and the other students were moving from room to room, so very soon, the hallway you stood in was more or less vacant. That was no problem for you though, as there were many times where you preferred solitude. So, looking into your locker, you made a mental note of all the things you needed. History book? Check. Pencils? Check. Homework from the previous night? Check. Everything was in order, and you found yourself taking everything out and getting ready to head over to your classroom. And it was here that, sadly, you came upon a strange and unfamiliar voice. Well, well, well. What do we have here? You stop what you're doing and spin around, confused as you notice there's nobody in the hall except for you. Raising a hand, you scratch your head. Maybe you imagined that voice? Yes, that must be it. You pick up your rucksack and sling it over your shoulder, closing your locker before taking a step down the hall, only to be stopped when that voice pops up again. Hoping to ignore me, eh? I think not. Yet again, you look around, again finding nobody there. You begin to get worried now, with a few beads of sweat pouring down your brow. Should you run and get help? What would you say? That you're bothered by a voice from nowhere? Yeah, that'll look normal for sure. As your situation makes you increasingly uncomfortable, you feel to your dismay something poking you on top of your head. Up here. Slowly. You do indeed look upwards, and soon after, you take a step back, letting out a yelp of surprise. Well, hello to you too. The creature before you was unlike any natural animal you've encountered in your life, even more exotic and strange looking than those weird beasts from the nature documentaries. What now hovered above you seemed like a mishmash of many different creatures, bird, bat, snake, and you were sure that even a little goat got in there too. All you knew for certain is that this thing was looking at you in a way you did not like. Oh, terribly sorry to interrupt you, my lad. Actually, I'm not sorry in the slightest. The name is Discord. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. And in a manner similar to that of a gentleman, the creature, Discord, grabs one of his ears and, in a move that shocks you utterly, lifts his scalp off, probably since he didn't have a top hat or something. Naturally, this made you want to do one thing, and one thing only, run. You spin around, ready to bolt as far away from this guy as possible, only to discover that you couldn't. Your legs wouldn't move, prompting you to look down. There, to your horror, you find that your feet were encased in what looked like chocolate, and a great big mound of it too, though how you got in there was beyond your understanding. Discord, watching you, attempted to break free, and let out a hearty chuckle. Oh, I do so enjoy moments like this. But, business before pleasure. 
I can't have you running off now. At least, not until after our deal. You stop struggling for the time being, looking back up to him as he hovers down to your level. The confusion must have been plastered all over your face, for Discord spotted it immediately and began to explain himself. You see, despite my reputation, I really do try to help others in my own way. And I can see that you, my friend, have a big problem on your hands. Yet again, your confusion is great, and Discord sighs at the sight of it, explaining himself further. I'm talking, of course, about your lady problems, boy. Immediately, you look away from him, embarrassed to your core, and it's bad enough to know that your secret is out, but to have it known by this... this... whatever it was? was even worse. Is that what he wanted you for? To mock you? The thought disgusted you to say, at least. But thankfully, the moment was short-lived, as you hear Discord laughing loudly, prompting you to look at him as he spoke. Oh, fear not, my boy. I'm not here to make fun. On the contrary, I think I can give you a great opportunity. You raise your eyebrow, showing a modicum of interest. Granted, you were still wary, as indeed anybody would be hearing such a thing, but there was no denying that the creature had piqued your interest. Seeing this look on your face, Discord gained a somewhat mischievous smirk as he began to speak up once more. You see, I believe I can help you. I know your trouble in getting the attention of the lovely ladies here at your school, so what I propose is a little help in that regard. I can use my power to make it so that you, my lad, will be able to get them to notice you without even putting any effort on your part. The look on your face at this point was one of incredulity. For while Discord may have already displayed great power to you, you very much doubted that he could pull off what he suggested. Yet again, the creature notices this. Mm, don't believe me? Mm, I can understand that. But this is no mere jest, friend. If you're willing... I can make you the center of attention at this school. The girls will come flooding out to meet with you and spend time with you. What say you to this? You narrow your eyes. It wasn't as if you thought he was lying, but there was something else mixed in with all of this. Something you didn't like. Your instincts told you to run, which you'd gladly do if your legs were unbound. And yet... There was another part of you that wished to listen to him and accept the danger no matter how great. After all, he was right that you had a problem when it came to romance. If he could help you where you had failed, it was at least worth trying out what he suggested. But then again, notion begins to claw at your mind. Nobody just does something like this out of the goodness of their hearts. No. Discord wanted something back from you in return, and that much was certain. You reached into your pockets hoping to pull out something you can give in exchange, only to find out that you had nothing, as evidenced by you pulling those pockets inside out. The spirit, at first, seemed confused by this action, only to have realization dawn on him, leading him letting out another chortle. Oh, don't worry about payment. I assure you, I will be more than compensated by seeing you get all the attention you'll be receiving. Naturally, words like that sent a shiver up your spine. You look at him, seeing mischief on his face, and yet, you failed to actually see any lie there. He meant what he said, that he could pull off whatever he promised to you. And yet, you still couldn't shake the feeling that this was all wrong somehow. However, you hang your head as a very stark realization becomes known to you. This Discord person would never have come to you unless he was certain that you were the kind of person that would have accepted his offer. And though you would have wanted to deny it, you knew that this was true of yourself. You were going to accept, no matter what the consequences your instincts were warning you about. So, after much silence, you look at him, still smirking in the way that bothered you so much, and gave him a nod. Seeing that, a look of elation crossed his face. Done! He raised a single clawed hand and snapped his fingers. Before you could react, there was a blinding flash of light prompting you to shield your eyes from it. Eventually, the light began to die down, and when it did, you knew something was wrong. It was a trick. It had to be. There was no way what you were looking at was real. And yet, in your heart, you knew it was true. For before you, 
was not the pair of hands you had before, but rather a bright pair of bright green hooves. With panic setting in, you dart your head about, looking at the rest of you. Hooves, four of them, a tail, green fur all over. There was no question. You were no longer a human being. You were a pony. The only small comfort you had was that you were no longer bound in chocolate, which, granted, was a small issue when compared to the bigger one you found yourself in. As one might expect, the situation caused more than a little frustration on your part, and you looked to Discord, who seemed to be enjoying this very much, as he tried his best to stifle a laugh. Oh, as good as this is, trust me, it's about to get better. You have no idea what he means by that, and honestly, you don't want to know. However, you see him rise his hand and snap his fingers yet again, and you indistinctively shield yourself, only to discover that he caused the bell to ring. You look around with confusion at this, seeing Discord just waiting patiently in front of you. Before you have the opportunity to say anything, you watch as many doors begin to fly open with your fellow students starting to pour out in the hallways. Why? Did Discord send the two of you forward in time or something? Or did he just make everyone think that this was the right time to leave class? No matter, for you had other issues to deal with. The closest door to you opens with all the rest of them. A girl your age walked out. She had a long blue ponytail hairdo with bright pink eyes. You were certain you knew her name. Sonata, perhaps? All you knew at that moment she saw you. She stopped. A look of shock crossed her face. Silence fell and there was great discomfort on your part, which was suddenly halted when the girls spoke up enthusiastically. She rushes towards you, falling oh to gosh, her knees to get at your eye pony. level, and before you can do anything or say anything, you found yourself being patted by her. At first you wanted to object to this, but the more she does it, patting your head with her fingers trailing through your mane, you find yourself actually enjoying the experience. Is this what it felt like for other ponies? You have no chance to find the answer right now, for as soon another girl comes rushing towards you, this one wearing a distinct Stetson hat. Well, howdy there, little fella. The new girl Ain't reaches behind just the your ears, thing I ever did see. and the feeling is almost electric, with you becoming even more relaxed, like how a dog might react given such treatment. As time goes on, more and more girls came rushing to greet you, one with long pink hair and a butterfly on her skirt, a girl in a leather jacket bearing fiery hair, a bubbly pink girl who squeals at the sight of you, and many more besides that. They surround you, petting you, speaking in a manner you know people do when they're trying to be nice and friendly to animals. You like the attention, there's no denying that, but your mind soon returns to Discord, who hovers away. Only now you notice that nobody else has noticed him, as if he were a ghost. But you do see him, as you reach your hoof out to try to stop him from leaving, only find him turning to you with a smirk. Well, my lad, it's been fun, but I've got to go. People to meet, places to see, and all that. And with that, he snapped his fingers, flashing himself away as mysteriously as he'd come, leaving you alone with your adoring crowd. As you stand there, unable to get any words out, you look at all the girls around you, and a barrage of questions flood through your mind. How do you change back? Can you change back? When will Discord return? Will Discord return? And through all of that, there was one final question that made itself very central in your current train of thought. What kind of mess have I gotten myself into now?